Hey YouTube, Mike here. Uh, we're not guy. How are you today? Uh, sorry um, about the uh, uh, not putting a video up for a couple of months, but I had some health issues with my knee, um, which is still prolonged. It's still going on, um, but um, here we are. Um, I still um, was answering questions. Thank you very much to all the subscribers. I think I'm 1,025 for a channel that people just look up, uh, you know, what the problem is um, uh, and the, 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 the comments and, the, and the, the emails that I've gotten back after the people that I've helped. I, I've had hundreds of people. Um, I was still answering all the emails and, and speaking with people. So, um, again, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. I'm going to be putting out more content now. Okay, um, I was able to acquire um, a condemned unit uh, from, uh, from Renai, so thank you very much Renai for sending me this RUC-98I natural gas unit. And now um, I um, can answer all the questions <clears throat> and go over this unit now, which is a condensing model, um, to uh, show you maintenance and troubleshooting procedures for this. But the video today um, is pretty much like 85% of all of the questions and the problems that um, I have spoken to people about and tried to work through it. And that is this venting issue. Um, first thing, find a qu qualified Renai installer to put the unit in. Whether you purchase the unit from a supply house um, an uh, uh, approved online um, dealer or Lowe's, make sure that that person is licensed, insured, bonded, whatever it is in your state, and they know how to install tankless heaters and preferably Renai um, certified people. But I want to go through this just bread and butter venting of a Renai condensing unit. Okay, on a Renai condensing unit, when you get it out of the box, of course, there's a cover on it. Now, this is, a, of course, this is an interior model. Exterior model, we don't have to worry about venting it. You're going to have two um, things on the top, let's just say. One is an exhaust, one is an air intake. If you're going to go with the Belkin venting, which is the approved concentric venting for Renai tankless heaters, you're going to use the center terminal. You're going to remove this adapter piece, which is, gonna, is the adapter piece for the PVC pipe, which we're going to get to in a minute. And you can keep it, you can discard it, you can do whatever you want with it. You got to make sure that when you're purchasing it now, for, for we do mostly non-condensing, so the two things that I'm going to show you are for non-condensing, but it looks the same, it just, it's different the, in the inside. You got to make sure it says for condensing appliances only. The difference is, is that the Outer shell where the air comes in is still the white polymer, but the inside is not metal, it's plastic. <clears throat> because of the condensing, it's not going to rot this middle piece out. But like I said, for, the, for this demonstration, we're just going to use this. But other than that, you're going to, um, they're going to be, they're going to look the same. Uh, where did I put it? Over here. When you get it, you're going to get a manual. Um, I tab my manuals. I still look at manuals. So go with Renai's installation instructions. You'll never go wrong. Okay? So we're not going to go over footage and we'll go over some basic measurements, but just go in the manual. There's a PDF online. You can look it up as far as for venting with the Belkin venting and for the concentric. Now, this is the, of course, these are going to be the older series. The new Sensei has different venting, and once that gets into stream, we'll be going over that. So, first thing, 
mounting it on, uh, all our tanklesses are mounted just like this. On the wall, we shoot some 2x4s in the wall, there's adjustable brackets, you can move the unit in and out. And then the first thing, we're going to turn this to the side. Let me just make sure I'm not going to kill anything here. Let's just turn this unit to the side. Okay, you have your first, which is your standard through-the-wall venting, okay, horizontal. It comes apart, okay? So you're going to, of course, put your elbow on and then put your piece in. And then that is what's going through the wall. Now, you're going to get two thimbles and you're going to get a bag of screws. You're going to get, th there's three screws per bag. You're going to put your three screws in here which will lock the plastic to the plastic. Don't use anything but the screws that provide it. Other than that, they're little, about a half an inch style sheet metal screw. You do not want to go from the polymer into the, the plastic or the metal because then you'll be introducing carbon monoxide into the air and this thing will be going bup, 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 bup. you don't want that okay you like that bup, 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 bup. thimbles black outside white inside the black is what stays outside anything more if it does has to be painted because it's not UV protected so thimble thimble sandwich them together 11.5 inches so it'll go through a standard wall. They make a 17 inch. That'll go through a longer wall, like a block wall. Use this as your guide. Mount this up, scribe it, and cut from the outside of the hole. You'll be perfect all the time. Okay, so horizontal ventilation. Vertical ventilation. Vertical ventilation. Can we see that? Black is what goes up through the roof. White is what comes down. Look at my video on how to cut your existing boot for the B vent, okay? Which is this vent right here, which most likely you'll be having in your garage. That's gonna go through a thimble. You can, re you can cut that thimble and push this vent right down. Okay, you do not, you do not want to vent this into B vent or a brick or masonry chimney. Okay, you don't, you, you're not gonna, so this is a straight piece of pipe. You got this coming out of your ceiling, which would be like this. You don't want to do that, okay? You, this thing will be busted within a year. All right, it's not designed for B vent. It's not designed for this to be shoved in a masonry chimney. This is meant to go through the wall or through your roof. So that's the Belkin venting. Now, of course, you can extend this to the elbow. You can put 45. Manual will tell you how many feet. Okay, we're not going to go through that. You can just look it up in the manual or you can look it up on the PDF. Same thing with this. Straight piece, 245s through the hole, up through it, 45s in the attic. Make sure they're sealed, three screws in it, and your tankless heater will last a lifetime. Well, it'll last 25 years. All right, so that is the Belkin Vent. Again, remember, if it's condensing, it must say for condensing, and if it's not, it's going to say okay, it's going to say universal non-condensing, see, kit short, 11.5 inches. Now, your other alternative is to leave this on. Now, if you notice here, on this, you have this cap. 
if you're using the Belkin venting, the cap stays. If you're going to go with the PVC venting, you're going to just pull this pin out and pull off this cap. Put it on the side, throw it away, whatever, because you're going to use the PVC venting. Okay. PVC fittings or PVC fittings. All right, they're Schedule 40, but they make DWV pipe, black label, non-pressure, no. Schedule 40, red letter, okay, for pressure. That's what you're using. You see the, this has got a foam core in it. This is all PVC, all right? Red letter, Schedule 40, not uh, foam core DWV. This is what you would find for like water mains and stuff like that, sprinkler systems and golf courses or parks. All right, let's turn this to the side. Okay, you can go straight up to the roof with this. When you go up through the roof, you're going to make kind of like a return. So you're not going to get water down in it. If you're going to go through the wall, you're going to start with two six-inch pieces. Not street L's, do it with two six-inch pieces. One goes for the exhaust. Now I'm using non-pressure just for demonstration purposes. And one goes for the air intake. The critical thing, the one critical measurement minimum 12 inches. So the, between these two pieces has to be at least 12 inches. I like to, what I like to do is I like to make it at least 14, 16. Then you'll take, you want to come out, you could do a T with screens because the water will go straight through. On the exhaust and a 45 for the air, you could do two 45s. So you're going to, say through the wall, 45, and then you can do a screen in here so none of those vermin will get in. But what I like to do with, with this is the exhaust, I'll come straight out with the 45. Like that. But then with the air intake, I'll come out like that and like that. So now, what are we saying? So now we have at least 14 inches on either side. Now, when you come up through the roof, again, maintain that 12 inches or better, and you'll be good as gold. And that's it. That is the meat and potatoes venting of a condensing unit. As far as a non-condensing unit, like a V-series or an RL series, you're not going to have this. You're not going to have the primary and second, excuse me, primary and secondary heat exchanger. You're just going to have one heat exchanger, burner, gas valve, okay? And you're not going to have this. You're just going to have that. So it's the Belkin venting only, and it would be that venting that has the metal inside. Or vertical venting, which would be this one, to go through the roof. So with this, with the um, non-condensing, you're only going to have the Belkin, and for the condensing, you're going to have the Belkin and the PVC Schedule 40 Red. Okay, I will be including my email, so you can email me any questions. Uh, most of the time, I'm going to shoot you back um, my phone number and a time for you to call me when we can go over it. Okay, all right, uh, YouTube, I hope this was helpful. And again, thank you very much for all of the subscribes, all of the likes, and all the comments. Um, and um, 
You all have a good and safe and productive week. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.